Um, I want you all to see um, the difference between marketing, sales, and closing. <laughs> the first time I ever realized this, I remember I was biking. Um, I was riding a bike because we were too poor for another car. And, uh, and I, was, I had been studying Russell's stuff. I had been reading Dotcom Secrets. I'd been going through these tons of courses. And I remember riding my bike home to our little apartment that was freezing. And I was asking, it was that conversation where I was like, why am I still broke? Why am I still broke? And I'm, I'm sick of it. Why am I, I can't make money. I know what I would do in that guy's business. It's funny, I was riding my bike home and I was looking at all these other businesses. I know what I'd do in that guy's scenario. I know what I'd do in that guy's scenario. Why isn't he doing that? And I'm the broke kid riding the bike home, <laughs> right? Like judging the crap out of all these other businesses. Why aren't they doing that? Why aren't they doing that? And it's funny because it was the first time I've realized, oh my gosh, I know how to sell. I'm terrible at marketing. There's a difference. I had never in my life considered that there was a huge difference between marketing and sales. I had done door uh, two summers of door-to-door -door sales. I was a telemarketer. I went to go learn sales because I knew that's what entrepreneurs are. They're salespeople. Okay? And, uh, but I had never learned what marketers are. Okay? These are my definitions, but marketing is simply the act of changing beliefs with the intent to sell. That's all it is. Okay? I'm going to go learn enough human behavior, enough human psychology to see how I can change beliefs. So now they're like, oh, I really need your product. That's what marketing is. Sales is the act of presenting an offer and overcoming objections. And closing is logical reasons to act now. Buy one, get one free. Act before midnight or else. Okay. How many of you guys have seen that before? Yeah, yeah, quite a few of you. Okay, cool. Um, so when we go back here and we look at the definition of marketing, marketing is the act of changing beliefs for the intent of a sale. What beliefs? Changing beliefs. What beliefs? Beliefs about their problems. I have this problem. This problem, this is super crazy, this huge, crazy problem for me. No one seems to understand me either. That's why this is such a big deal. If I can go in and lead with my problem, it's one of the easiest ways to disarm them and re help them realize that I understand them more than everybody else, and my solution is a natural fit after that. What you're changing is the beliefs they have around their current resources and their own capacities. Okay. Helpful, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, check this out. So, um, let me, okay. Now when I say uh, solve valuable problems, um, anyone uh, study Adam Smith much? Adam Smith, uh, father of capitalism, right? Uh, 1700s, amazing, amazing guy. What was interesting about uh, in 1700s, um, there was a really interesting belief that was pushed around by all society about what causes value. And it was the general belief that the amount of time I spent creating a product, right? Somebody be like, oh, I spent all this time. I was up all night creating this product. That's why it's a hundred dollars or whatever. And people, and Adam Smith saw that and said like, that's not how value is created. That's how value is created. Okay, it was the general idea that the amount of time I spent creating the thing is what caused the value and how much the price would be to the other person. I think that's weird. Value is in the eyes of the beholder. Values in the eyes of the customer. And for some reason, this was like a revolutionary idea to Europe at the time and helped actually uh, form uh, some of the major ideas around European reform. <laughs> okay, he actually, he actually used some of the things, wealth of nations. They use a lot of that, including this principle around this. Like, wealth is not, I'm sorry, a value is not created by the person who created it. Value is, is determined by the person who's going to be purchasing it. And it's a revolutionary idea. And so if we talk about solving valuable problems, I have to go through and just share with you guys cost versus price versus value. Cost versus price versus value. What is cost? How much does it cost me? What is that? How much does it cost me to create it? Yeah, yeah, it's what they pay. I'm sorry, what you pay. Cost is what you pay. Right? What is price? What they pay. Oh, the answers are up there. <laughs> Didn't animate that. <laughs> okay. Who determines the value? They do. they do. They determine the value. And people will sit back and say like, well, I'm solving a really valuable problem. Uh, valuable from your perspective. They don't care about it, right? So what I want to do real fast, oh, um, uh, so I used to go in and the way I would choose my price on things, which we'll talk a little bit more a little bit later, is, um, is I, would, I would say like, well, would I buy it? How many of you guys chosen your price that way? But 
I'm not the one buying it, right? I'm, I shouldn't be asking me my opinion, right? And so we're gonna, we'll talk more about that in the future. But the biggest thing I want you to understand here is that value is determined by them, okay? Um, and value is, of these three, the easiest one to go turn the lever on, easiest one to go turn, pull the crank on, okay? I can only work on my costs so much. And just like that guy we were building funnels for, he was selling at a loss, I can only lower my price so much. Value, very easy for you to go pull that lever and increase it.